Hi guys, it's Junior with Go Power Sports. Today we're gonna do a front brake kit on the Coleman RT200. Today we're doing one of our in-house R&D design kits. It's for the Coleman RT200 and it's a hydraulic front brake kit. This is what it looks like installed. So I'm going to take it all off, clean it up, and then show you how to put it back together again. Okay, one, two, blank, one, two. All right, so our brake kit is going to include the brake assembly with a 34 inch hose, your wheel with a brake disc, it's gonna include this bracket that attaches to the fork, four identical brackets, one bracket that will go onto your axle. We'll include two bolts to attach your brake caliper to the bracket assembly, four lock washers to go with those two bolts. These two washers are supplementary axle spacers. And it also includes these two sticky foam pads to attach to the inside of this split ring. So the tools you're gonna need for this kit are either a ratchet or an impact driver. You're gonna need a 17 mil socket or wrench, 14 mil, eight mil, 10 mil socket or wrench, and lastly, a 3 16 Allen head driver or just an Allen wrench. Either will work. You're also going to need a degreaser of some sort. I used brake clean. Also, either a zip tie or some tape works great. That's not included in the kit, but it's up to you. All right, so now the first step to this kit is you wanna take your front wheel and tire off. We've already done that, and we've already swapped the tire onto the wheel that comes with the kit. If you're gonna use the stock Coleman tires, they are one directional. You don't wanna put that V-tread on backwards, so pay attention to that. You want your brake disc on the driver's side. Now that we've got that mounted, you're gonna use your stock axle and your stock axle spacers. We want to mount from the passenger side or the right side of the bike because you're going to have to slide a bracket on later. Once you put your stock spacers and everything in, there could be a little slop in there. If your spacers aren't quite the right size, we have included a couple washers in the kit. The supplemental washers are to take up that space. Now, if you do have slop, the washers are gonna go on the opposite side. They're gonna go on the passenger side of the axle. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these, take all that off and slide these in here. All right. All right, so now that we have those spacers in, there's now not any slop in the wheel side to side. So the next step is we've got multiple different little brackets that are gonna go in this kit. This uses a 3 16 Allen head. So I'm gonna take those two out. If you'll notice in here, there are two washers in there. Those washers need to stay in between these two split rings. Those washers keep you from clamping down on your forks too tight and collapsing this fork tube. If you do that, you will ruin it. So keep those spacers in there. If you are gonna paint it, um, go ahead and do a dry fit, dry install before you do paint it, just to make sure that everything's good to go. In this kit, you have these two sticky foam pieces. Those are gonna go inside of this. And pretty much what they do is provide a bit more clamping force on your forks, but they also protect your paint. For the dry fit up, you can just wrap a piece of masking tape or something like that around there if you wanna be real particular about protecting the paint on there. Since we are not gonna paint this, and we've already had it on the bike, we're gonna go ahead and clean these off. You wanna degrease them. 
That way the pad sticks really well. So I'm going to go ahead, use a little bit of brake clean and degrease them, and put these two little sticky pads on. All right, so you just want to center it up on that split ring. So now that we have all our parts ready, we also have two bolts that have come in this kit. These bolts have two lock washers on them. Those lock washers kind of act as a spacer so that the bolt doesn't go all the way through everything, including your caliper, and then run into your brake disc and drag on your brake disc. So you do need to use both of those washers on each bolt. So the order that these little pieces go together is, so you're gonna have your outermost piece, which goes on your axle like this. Then behind this piece towards the brake disc, you're gonna have two of the four identical spacers. The next piece in the mess is this. And then you're gonna have two more of the four identical spacers. And then your brake caliper attaches to that. So I found the easiest way to do it is we're gonna thread them all together with a bolt. Actually, we'll go ahead and put both bolts in there right now. But take a zip tie, run it through there to hold them all together. So now, you don't need that third hand that you've always wanted. That keeps them together pretty well. All right, so now this piece is gonna go on the axle right here. And we're gonna go ahead and take this and we're just gonna start these two bolts on this collar. And we just wanna start them, get it held in place. They don't have to be tight or anything. It's just holding it all together for us. So now that this is started, we're gonna take our brake caliper. We're gonna thread this through and get our bracket assembly attached. So now we're gonna thread this through and get our brake caliper attached. So that one started, we'll get the bottom bolt started, and then we'll be able to uh, get things snugged down where they need to be. There we are. All right, so these bolts have a 10 mil head, so we're gonna go ahead and get those run in here. So those are snug, that is snug. We're gonna go ahead and tighten down the axle. When you take your axle nut on and off a few times, it's a good idea to go ahead and put some Loctite in there. These are cutting nuts, so they're meant for the axle, but you use them a few times and they don't really work anymore for that purpose, so if if you've already assembled it, taken it off, painted it, done whatever, and you're gonna put it back on the last time, go ahead and Loctite that. It's a good tip. So now that that is snug on there, we're gonna go back to tightening these up. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the zip tie off. There we go. All right, and now we are gonna tighten this up. Make sure that these are started by hand. Do not get them cross-threaded. It'll be a pain in the butt. And these do have that crush washer in, so you can put some torque on them. But uh, if you're really concerned about it, just put some Loctite in the back, don't over tighten them. Now that that's on, I'm gonna hold the brake out of the way. 
and nothing's rubbing abnormally. I'm happy with all of that. So we're gonna route our brake hose and attach the cylinder to the handlebar. And for that, you do need an eight mil socket or wrench. Okay, so I'm gonna loosen these two eight mil bolts. Well, they're six mil, they're headed with eight. And attach this to the fork. And as with everything else, get it started by hand. These are cast aluminum and uh, they will cross thread easier and they will uh, snap in half if you put too much torque on them. So just a hair, nothing crazy. Lock tight it if you feel like you need to. All right, so now that we've got our brake kit installed, we wanna make sure that it is operating correctly. Hydraulic brakes do need to be pumped after you install them. So, looks like it's working great. Let's go give it a rip and uh, make sure that we like it. All right, let's test it out. Well, we know it works. I'm a really big fan of these hydraulic front brake kits. They really add something to your experience, especially if you have a built engine. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like our R&D videos or any of the other videos we come up with, please give us a like and subscribe. And we look forward to next time.